author will submit their article to a journal. Usually in today's world, this is all done through the journal's electronic system. No longer are papers sent through the mail or through other kinds of services. Everything is done electronically. Ideally, before the author submits the paper, they will have read all of the author guidelines and followed them very closely. Unfortunately, this often does not occur, and that may be one stumbling block for the author in getting their paper considered for a journal is that they did not follow the author guidelines. Authors may have sent a query letter to the editor prior to submission. So as an editor, you may be familiar with a paper that has now been submitted because an author may have discussed the possibility of that paper with you previously. Next, the journal editor evaluates the paper. The first that the journal editor is looking at is, is the topic in alignment with the purpose and focus of the journal? If not, the paper will be outright rejected at this stage. Let me give you an example. As I mentioned, I'm the editor of the Journal of Professional Nursing, sponsored by the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. The focus of the journal is baccalaureate and graduate education in nursing. Unfortunately, I receive many, many clinical papers focused on the care of patients with certain disorders. Those clinical papers are outright rejected without being read or being sent out for peer review because the topic is an inappropriate match for the journal. If the editor deems that the topic of the paper is a match, the editor will further evaluate the paper for its depth and scope of how the author has addressed the topic the editor will scan for the quality of the writing, the logical flow of ideas, and the novelty or new slant on the topic provided by the author. If the editor decides the paper is acceptable for this initial evaluation, the editor then will go to the next step of selecting reviewers and not send it out for peer review. The editor will also determine if the paper is too similar to a recently published paper or one that is in the process of being published. If the editor deems that this topic is too similar to one that has already been recently published or one that is in the process of being published, then the editor may make the decision to reject the paper. If the editor decides that the topic has something new to offer and is not too similar to what has already been published, the paper will move to the peer review process stage. The next step in evaluating the paper is a plagiarism check. Many journals use a checking software tool to evaluate the paper and its similarity to previously published work. Here the editor needs to use very careful judgment if the software indicates that there's too much similarity between the submitted paper and previously published work. If there is too much similarity, the editor may make the decision to reject the paper and not send it out for peer review. But I would offer caution in that editors are hesitant to ever accuse an author of plagiarism, but instead may say to the author, your paper simply has too much similarity to previously published work. The next step in the review process is for the editor to select reviewers for the paper. 
Often journals will aim for a minimum of two reviews for a paper. The editor may select to obtain more reviews if the reviews come back with very different opinions. But generally, the goal is for two reviews per paper. Editors have a database of reviewers that we can access easily in our electronic system. With that system, our goal is to select reviewers who have expertise in the topic and or those who have expertise in the research method or perhaps in the statistics that were used in the paper. We also attempt to select reviewers who would have no conflict of interest as they review the paper. For example, we would avoid selecting a reviewer who comes from the same institution where the authors are employed. Reviewers are sent directions and asked to return the review in about a two to four week time frame. Included in the directions are a review form that guides the reviewer in how to evaluate the paper. The review form may ask the reviewer to rate things on a Likert type scale and then to have a section for open comments about the paper. So once the reviewer is sent an invitation we hope that the reviewer will promptly accept or decline the review invitation. It's very difficult for an editor when the reviewer does not respond with either an accept or a decline. It's hard to know how to interpret when the invitation is completely ignored. So we urge all invited reviewers to at least respond one way or the other. 